Hi everyone, it's Dot and welcome to week 24 of my final 50. I want to give you guys a little bit of an advance warning on a project I'm going to be working on starting next week. But first, I need to talk about how bad this week was for me. How bad is bad? I drank wine and I made a pit stop to Dunkin Donuts that didn't end well. It was that bad of a week for me. So why would I do that? I was a complete wreck. I was freaking out over everything. If I made a mistake, regardless of how big or small, I would just have a meltdown. If my pets wanted affection, it annoyed me to no end. Oh, and the husband? Any sock left on the floor made him my nemesis. And no matter how hard he tried to calm me down, it just set me off even more. Okay, I was stressed and I had no clue why. I figured my menopause symptoms were just flaring up and that's what triggered my cravings. But when I eat low carb, I don't have the major flare ups. Now, before I started eating low carb, I would always turn to food whenever I started feeling stressed out or anxious about something. After going keto, I started looking for ways to cope with my stress without having to eat. And for me, that turned out to be a five mile power walk, rain or shine. Unfortunately, I can't do that right now thanks to my ankle, which I know I mentioned quite a bit on these videos. So instead of looking for a new way to blow off steam, I just fell right into my old habits like that. Normally after a misstep, I quickly get back on track, but that dang donut triggered a two day fast and my stress didn't go away. It was really frustrating because I just couldn't pinpoint what was wrong. As it turns out, my sock littering husband actually knew why I was stressing out. And apparently this week long freak out happens every three months and it coincides when I have my cancer checkups. Right now I have quarterly checkups where I either meet with my radiologist or my oncologist. Well, this week, not only was I meeting with my radiologist, I also got my mammogram results. Now, let me just say this about my doctors and their staff. They are awesome. But when I see their phone numbers pop up on my phone, just to remind me of an upcoming appointment, I completely freak out. I'm just terrified. Adding to the freak out, this week I received a call specifically about my mammogram. Now, normally I get a letter saying everything is fine. So of course, once I saw that phone number, my anxiety went through the roof. The very nice, calm lady on the other end of the phone stressed my results were negative, but she wanted me not to worry about the fact I hadn't got a letter because they were having a glitch getting them out on time. I so appreciate that they called to let me know, but it didn't stop me from going down that rabbit hole. Whenever these checkups come around, I instantly think the cancer is back. There's also a sense I'm not in control of my life because I'm waiting for a test result to come back, which takes two weeks. This past week to release the stress, I drank wine and ate the worst tasting donut you possibly can have. And I don't even remember the kind of donut I had. It didn't matter. I just wanted a donut. On top of that, I'm dealing with a physical condition that is directly related to my surgery and radiation treatment. And my radiologist thinks high stress could be the cause and I'm thinking he's right. Now I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail because that would be way too much information, but it's not really a physical condition I'm struggling with per se. Let's just say that if you Google dilator and uterine cancer, that should give you an idea of what I'm stressing over a little bit. So my radiologist recommended that I talk to one of the hospitals cancer therapist. I met with a therapist yesterday and I'm so happy I did. It turns out that it's very common for cancer patients to get really freaked out and stress over upcoming checkups and not relaxing during a certain physical activity. Well, that's also common for women who have my type of cancer. It turns out that most cancer patients have difficulty returning to their normal life after treatment and surgery. It was such a huge relief after talking with her. Over the last two years, I've really focused on my physical health, but I've neglected the emotional side. And it is comforting to know that there are a lot of tools and resources that my hospital's offering that can really help me out. I plan to keep meeting with her over the next few weeks to help me deal with my stress. And she's going to help me get through a pretty big unresolved issue the fact that I can't have children. When I got that phone call from my doctor two years ago, telling me I had cancer, I was in the middle of fertility treatments. After that call, I couldn't even process what had been taken from me because everything at that point was about survival. Well, here I am two years post-surgery. I'm getting my life back together finally, but as an emotional eater, when I don't deal with the source of my stress or sadness, 
it's gonna cause me to mess up, like eating a bad donut or drinking when I don't want to. And those things definitely affect my health and weight. During that one hour talk with the counselor, we talked about things I never really spoke about out loud. There were a lot of tears, but afterward I felt genuine relief. Now, before we get to this week's weigh-in, I wanted to let you know that starting Sunday, I'm going into an extended fast. Twice a year, I do a seven day fast, and this isn't for weight loss. Typically, people gain somewhere around 50 to 75% of the weight back after an extended fast. For me, this fast is specifically related to my cancer. The theory behind it is that when you do an extended fast, your body will shed cells that aren't functioning properly. And I'll give you a little bit more detail during my next weigh-in. Speaking of weighing in, How did I do this week? Last week, I weighed 207.2 pounds, and today I'm at 206.5 pounds. So I've lost a little more than half a pound this week. Not bad for a donut chomping, wine drinking crazy lady, but it just goes to show that your week isn't shot just because you make a mistake. You have to get back on track with the next meal. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy these videos, hit like, subscribe if you haven't, and share with your friends. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now.